devotional reading is Matthew chapter 19, verse 13 through 22. Background scripture is Matthew 18, verse 1 through 9, and also Mark chapter 10, verse 15. And our foundational scripture is Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 through 9, which we'll extract uh, for the lesson. And verse and, and it reads, at that same time, at, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus said, and Jesus called a little child unto him. And said to him, and said to him, in the same midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye become converted and become as a little as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall and whoso shall receive one such one such little little child in my name receives me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believes in me, it were better for him that a millstone was hung around his neck, and that he would drown in the depths of the sea. Woe unto the world because of the offenses, for it must needs to be that offenses come. But woe to that the man by whom the offenses cometh. Wherefore, if thou hand or thy feet offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into a life held or Halt or maim, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thy eye offends thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and be cast in the hell's fire. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Our title is called The Greatest in the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. The Greatest in the Kingdom. That's, uh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, as I was reading um, Mark chapter 10, verse 15, uh, well, let me just go back and say that all 12 were Jesus' disciples. But then he had an inner circle as well, which is uh, Peter, John, and James. And so sometimes Jesus would take the three places he didn't take the 12. And you know, sometimes as humans, we tend to jockey, I'll use that term, jockey, for position. We, we want to sit next to the man and oftentimes want to be the man and I don't think this was any different and I'll let Pastor expound on it when he comes up to do the over but I don't think this was any different. They, they wanted positions of authority, positions of power. Mm -hmm. They saw how Jesus was moving. And so certain, and so Jesus heard them arguing, well, who's the greatest, who's this, who's this? Well, you know, you, you know, a lot of different things provoked that conversation. Jesus knew what they were talking about, and Jesus called and said, who were you guys talking about? Mm -hmm. And so they, they started talking, and they asked that question, who will be the greatest among you? And, G, and verse 2 says, And Jesus called a little child unto them, and sat him in the midst of them. And verse 3 says, And verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become like a little child, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. The, 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 one of the signs that they weren't ready yet was that they were having that fleshly conversation, that worldly conversation 
Because when you're really in the kingdom, it's about pro progressing the kingdom forward, not necessarily your own agenda. Sometimes when you walk with God, you have to be willing to give up your right to be right so that God can get some glory. And oftentimes, you know, um, it, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. it's, about, it's about the kingdom that you're a part of. I, I'm reminded of the scripture where it says, if Jesus be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. Not if we're lifted up, but if he's lifted up. And so Jesus brings a child into the midst of him and, 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 he's, and you know, Jesus always uses every opportunity as a teaching moment. And so he brings the child into the midst of him and he says, unless you become like this child, you won't be able to, to be in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And, 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 and that was profound because children, women and children in that time were considered, they weren't on the same level as men. Mm -hmm. They were lower than men. They were treated like that. So for him to bring a child in the midst and say, unless you become like this child, mm -hmm. you won't make it into the kingdom. <laughs> And verse 4 says, Whoever, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You gotta be like this little child, because this little child is is the children have, most children have um three characteristics that I would like to point out. They're they're sincere. Mm -hmm. A child is just telling you know, sometimes. A child will just tell you what's on their mind. Yeah. They ain't gonna shoot Cody, you know. They don't know. They don't. They haven't been corrupted by the world. They don't, you know. They they haven't. They have a sin nature, but it, it's not perfected like grown folks. Mm -hmm. They're they're sincere. They're trustworthy, and they're humble. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, especially if you are going to follow God and be a part of the kingdom, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those other things that you want will be added unto you. But let's keep the main thing, the main thing. You gotta be humble. Mm -hmm. You gotta be, you gotta trust God. A, 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 a child trusts their parents, regardless of what their parents may be doing. A child is trusted. And a child, a child is sincere, and a child is humble. And so if you, as um, part of the kingdom, if you're not trusting God, if you're not uh, sincere in your worship, if you're, if you're not humble, then you, you, by, you almost disqualify yourself because those are the attributes that you need. That speaks to where you are in God. That speaks if, if it's just fashion or a show or it's real. Mm -hmm. Or you just want to sit high and look low and be in a position of power. Yeah. And verse 5 says, And whoso shall receive such receives one such like this child in my name receives me. In other words, you can't mishandle God's children when they're coming to you in sincerity, in humbleness, and, 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 and trusting you. They're trusting that you are who you say you are. They're, 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 they're trusting that you um, are loving God and, and giving everything to God just like they are. And so they don't want to, it, it, they're, they're putting their trust in you because you say you represent God. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be careful how we handle one another. God is holding us accountable for how we handle one another. In other words, treat this little child as if you was treat, treat this child or this person who's who's in the faith as if you're dealing with me, as if you give them the, the honor and respect that you would give me. Show them the love that you would show me because as children of God, we're known by our love for one another and towards the world. That's how they're drawn to Christ is through our love and how we treat one another. Verse 6 says, But who shall offend one of these children which believeth in me? It would have been better for him 
that a millstone were hung around his neck and that he were drowned in the sea. Sometimes but Jesus is just saying it's not, I'm, I'm, it's not going to be good for you. Yeah. It's not wise to mishandle what belongs to me. Because when you mis mishandle what belongs to me, you're, bis you're, you're basically disrespecting me. And it's not wise to fall into the hands of an angry God. You, 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 you got to walk a thin line when you deal with God's people. And so God is, I, I'm, he's given an illustration of it would have been better for you mm -hmm. had you not been born for you to willfully do this type of behavior because I'm going to hold you accountable. Yeah. I, 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 you, you, when you do it to them, you're doing it to me. And so he describes um, what it's like to be reprimanded or what it's like to be dealt with when just like a mother, you know the a wrath of a mother when you mess with her children? Oh yeah. So you know, G you know, God Jesus is telling me, I, I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. I suggest you don't mess with none of mine. Yeah. Treat them like you got some sense, else it's gonna end up real, real bad for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, number seven, woe unto, woe unto the world because offenses, woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must need to be that offenses come, but woe to the man of whom the offenses come. In other words, offenses is going to happen. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's part of being in a fallen world, but don't let it come through you. The people are going to act up and do what they do, and there's going to be some offenses, and people going to, we see it right now. People mishandling each other. It's part of the fall of the world. But don't let it be you partaking in that. You, we've been called out and set apart. What the world do, we don't do. Mm -hmm. How the world get down, we don't get down like that. And so uh, offenses is coming. Just to show the sky is blue and the grass is green. Offenses is coming, but don't let it come through you. Yeah. Verse 8. Wherefore, if thou hand or thy feet offend thee, cut it off and cast them, and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt and maim rather than having hands or two feet to cast into the everlasting fire. In other words, Jesus is saying, whatever, whatever you doing that's reckless, mm -hmm. separate yourself from that. Mm -hmm. If your mouth is foul, you better get control of it mm -hmm. and separate yourself from that foul language. If you doing stuff, because what's done in the dark is going to come to the light. You, in other words, walk in some self-control. And he uses an illustration um, um, because sometimes it's painful mm -hmm. to separate yourself for some things that you've been practicing. And maybe sometimes it's painful to separate yourself from some, even some people you love. I grew up with them, but they're not serving God. And, it, and you may have to love them from across the street. You might have to exercise some social distance like COVID because I can't allow you to jeopardize what God is doing in my life. And I have to, and it's painful for me to have to separate myself from you. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's almost like a, a member or a, a body part being separated. It's painful, but it, I'd rather go through that pain than to be eternally separated from God. I rather separate myself from some of my habit, my bad habits, or some of the people, or whatever it is that's an offense. Yeah. I rather d get rid of that than to lose my inheritance with God. Mm -hmm. And so, in, in other words, Jesus said, "You got to make a choice. You can't have one foot over here and one foot over here." Yeah. You're going to have to make a choice. Either you're in the kingdom and you're kingdom minded, mm -hmm. or you're, in your, you're, you're walking in carnality and you're, you're, you're dealing with how the world gets down. You have to make a choice. And, and, and it's not easy to discipline yourself, but it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. 
Verse 9, and if your eye offends thee, pluck it out. Cast it, cast it from thee. It is better that thy enter into the, uh, if thy eye offends thee, cast it out from thee. It is better for thee to come into life with one eye rather than to have two eyes and to be cast in hell. Now, the, um, I'll let Pastor elaborate a little bit. So, once again, your eyes, you know, I'm, I, I equate that. Now, I'll let Pastor drill this home and, and shed more light. Um, this is just my theory on it. I think that your eyes represent your imagination. The stuff that don't, so your hands and your feet is what you do. People can see that, mm -hmm. right? You offend someone with your hand and feet, they can see that. But you can also offend secretly by what you look at and imagine And don't nobody know but God, and God's holding you accountable for even that. You, you, gotta, you gotta get all, anything, because he wants you to be like him. And, you know, we got to, so some thoughts are going to come, but you don't have to entertain them. Mm -hmm. I like to say, change the channel of your mind. When that thought comes in, the Bible says, take captive every thought that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. You got to take captive of that thought and put it under your feet. Because if we, we let it linger, and we give in to it, we think on it, it gets stronger and stronger, and then, then it gets to a point where all you need is an opportunity to exercise what you've been thinking on. Mm -hmm. And now you're in a mess. So you have to take captive every thought. And I, I, and I wanna go, my time is almost up, but I wanna go back and point out something that when it says be humble like a child, because that, for those are the, you know, the kingdom is, is, is made up of, of this. Well, it, it's, it, it speaks to a humble position. It speaks to a servant, lowly, a servant. Mm -hmm. And everybody has the opportunity to be great mm -hmm. because everybody can serve. You don't need a title or a position. You just got to have a, a heart to serve. And God will create opportunity for you to serve. You just got to be willing to walk through the door. That's trusting again. You got to be willing to walk through the door when the Lord opens it up. Will you trust God? Or do you need doctor, pastor, elder, bishop? Do you need all of these behind your name? Or do or well, will you serve just just because you want to see God's kingdom go forward? I'm reminded of Jesus when he came. Now he's God. He give he always gives examples. He's God. He's God. He left heaven, came down through 42 generations, and, and he he put on flesh, and he and he's walking among us. This is God walking among us and he himself gives an example he took off his 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 garments and he began to wash his disciples feet now that service mm -hmm. that was a, a a job left for one of the house servants to do not the king of kings but it's not about your reputation. It's not about your position. It's about will you love your brother and sister? Will you do what's right for the kingdom? Will you give up your right to be right so that God can get some glory? Remember, it's all about him. we just pieces that he's using to get glory. And we can't make it about us. So the reason why I went back to that is because Anybody, if you want to be great, just get in a servitude mindset. And, and, and I'm reminded when the, your gift will make room for you. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to jockey and, and cut corners. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and in due season, He will exalt. And when he exalts you, you're ready because you've been through the fire. You've been tried on every side. You know what it's like. 
And so God has a set time where he'll exalt you. But until then, and even then, become a servant. Serve. Look for opportunities to do good. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. So with that being said, that is the end of my lesson. The greatest in the kingdom. At this time, we're going to have Pastor Tate coming. I'm looking forward to getting these spiritual nuggets. I know he's, I, I know he's got a bunch of them. He's been a bunch of jewels he's been to drop on us. And so we, at this time, I'm going to take my seat and allow Pastor Tate to come uh, teach us again. The Lord has spared our lives and left us here in the land of the dying. And on our way to the land of the living, thank Reverend Smith for, that, for the teaching of the lesson. Good morning to all of you that are present. <clears throat> There's a few things I want to add uh, to the uh, lesson. The greatest in the kingdom. At this particular time, the uh, disciple was looking at the uh, establishing God's kingdom mm -hmm. here on earth as a physical kingdom. <clears throat> and when they use that, who's, who's the greatest in the kingdom of God? Because see, back uh, during the time of the children of Israel was coming along and all through that through that line, through that line, the kingdom of God had been led by kings that was, uh, that one was uh, was selected and then the others appointed, and some selected by, uh, uh, by the peoples. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it had been a history of Israel down through his hit, down through his lifespan that they had, uh, that they had great leaders who were king, <clears throat> who were and the king being the number one in the kingdom of God back in those days. And then you had um, uh, other individuals who was uh, what second in command and third in command. If you remember the time when uh, Joseph was down in Egypt on the, on the Pharaoh, <clears throat> that Joseph was playing, I think he was made ruler, third ruler of the kingdom. Okay, so they, they, had, they had what they call positions in the kingdom. So. So now the the, uh, the, uh, the Jews had position in the kingdom uh, also. So when you look at when you look at the Jews set up now, the Jews set up at that time, it was the uh, high priest who was considered the head of the head of the kingdom. Then you had the uh, priests. Then you had then you come along with the with the uh, various individuals in the Sanhedrin Council, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and and all these people, so the, all these people made up the, the kingdom, okay? And so, and so now the, the the disciples of Jesus are looking at, well, this thing is gonna be turned around, and I need to know my position, <laughs> where I stand, uh, as far as the kingdom. But but uh, but just before this, I have to just before this, I have to give you a little bit of a little bit of background on that. What it said. At that, at that same time, the disciples came unto him, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of, of heaven? So you look at that same time, prior to that, uh, they had been uh, talking about paying the taxes, debating about paying the taxes. And Jesus instructed them to go, go, go fishing, and the first fish that you catch, get the uh, money out of his mouth and go pay our taxes. Okay, and so now, and so they, 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 uh, they, what they call ricocheted off of that, and getting into now the kingdom, uh, and who was the, who was the greatest. And so the disciples had a legitimate concern because they expected Jesus to really establish a physical heavenly kingdom here on earth, and so therefore. There was a, we might want to get there, we might want to find out how we how we stack up mm -hmm. and what our positions are, okay? Uh, and if, if you remember, I believe it was uh, uh, it was James uh, James and John's mother 
went to Jesus on one occasion and said, I know that you come to establish your kingdom, and I know you're going to establish your kingdom. And when you do establish your kingdom, I want my two sons to be number two and number three mm -hmm. in the kingdom. I don't want to sit on the right hand, I want to sit on the left hand. If you look at the kingdom at the kingdom of the world back in those days, whenever the king meet, uh, the uh, second, the uh, second in command, or the first in command, after the king would always sit on the right side, mm -hmm. and the next one would always sit on the left side. Mm -hmm. And so those were the people who would take the position of the king if the king, if something happens to the king. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so. <clears throat> And so now when you look at America, now it's the vice president, mm -hmm. okay, and then it's the speaker of the house, mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and so on. And so it's always been an, an been a anarchy or uh, a established organization in the world. Mm -hmm. And so now the, the disciples know that that's going to be an established organization in the world, and they want to be at the top of, at the top of the chain mm -hmm. to help make some help make decisions. They have been tired of being. Uh, Pushed around and tell what to do, and uh, you know, and third in command, fourth in command, and never in command. Right. You see, and so they're always looking for. they always looking for the the king, uh -huh. Uh -huh. the Messiah, who was supposed to be the king, going to deliver us, uh -huh. going to set us free, going to get us back into into the position that our forefathers used to have. Uh -huh. Okay, and so. And so when it, when, it, when it comes down to it, it seemed like this wasn't taking place. Uh, they've been following Jesus for some time, and Jesus is not making no changes, you know, <laughs> to the earth, to the earth of the establishment. And so they they begin to begin to get worried. Am I still in the same position I was? Am I still in the same setup I was before He came? Is there going to be a change? And so they so they put it in a they put it in a form where they call themselves trying to I would say how smart Jesus would put it in a question where he would kind of trigger his thinking. Mm -hmm. And and so they, in, in that first verse they asked the question, who is the greatest? Okay, in the kingdom. And so Jesus they knew that Jesus had to respond one way or the other. Because it always answers the question whether it's positive or whether it's negative. Mm -hmm. It depends on how we receive it. Yeah. Okay, and so and so now uh, as he as he responds to these to these uh, greenhorns, <laughs> <laughs> these uh, want to be uh, leaders mm -hmm. and no converts. Next thing is how you gonna leave somebody, and you're not even converted. Yeah. How you gonna leave somebody, and you haven't even been trained. Yeah. Yeah. One thing you've been trained to do is learn how is, is, is learn, uh, uh, train how to fish. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Jesus having them understand fishing is different from uh, leading peoples yeah. and being ruler over kingdom. And so <clears throat> and so and so. And so now, when he uh, when he kind of explains this, he kind of put a chill on them. You see, and, and so uh, who is the greatest? In, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And then uh, when Jesus went to talk about a, a child, mm -hmm. they knew they were children. Mm -hmm. They knew that they had they had come a long way from childhood. And when Jesus began to explain him the, the, the difference between a child and, and, a, and a Christian and uh, people who uh, uh, I would say that has, a, has an understanding and uh, have an understanding and know what to say, when to say it, how to say it, what to do and how to do. They hadn't come to that point yet. They hadn't learned to forgive. They were still, they were still in the, uh, in the, uh, what would you call it, brood, brooding mode and uh, mm -hmm. hateful mode and uh, selfish mode. Mm -hmm. They were still in that selfish mode and I deserve mode. Yeah. See, when you have people figure that they deserve mm -hmm. 
in spite of, that's a dangerous person. Yeah. The next thing is, they hadn't did anything. Yeah. <laughs> they, had, they hadn't did a thing. Mm -hmm. Now they're talking about being great in the kingdom. Yeah. They're talking about something way down the road. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta work on now to get what you need to be later. You can't become no supervisor as soon as you come in there, as soon as you go on the job, unless you have some experience. And that's and that experience has been recognized and also proven. You, 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 you're not gonna be no supervisor. Are y'all with me? And so now the disciples is now challenging Jesus. On the basis of, can they get a position? Can they get a position? And when Jesus explained them what it takes to have it, what it takes to, to be in that position, they don't like it too well. Because he's comparing them with somebody that's totally ignorant. <laughs> can y'all imagine? Can y'all imagine what's going through their mind? I know I'm not a child. Yeah. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I'm a grown man now. And you're going to come tell me I need to think like a child? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But he wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't beating up on them in the sense of actually thinking like a child. He was talking to them uh, like one, you got to learn to uh, forgive and forget. You have to learn to hurry up and get over stuff. You take a child, children can be fighting one minute. And five minutes later, they playing together again. Now how many adults can do that? Not many. In fact, I think you can count them on one hand or two fingers. <laughs> that will that, that that have a big heated argument, knock down brawl out, mm -hmm. and you think five minutes from now, ten minutes from now, they're gonna be smiling and laughing and hugging each other and saying I'm sorry. I don't think so. You gonna have to be you gonna have to be saved twice. Sanctified on all sides and filled with the Holy Ghost from head to toe. Are, are, are y'all with me? In order to be able to do what Jesus is saying here today. And Ralph Smith done went, done went, done went through the lesson. <laughs> he, done, he done went through the lesson. And so, now, Jesus said, look, let's go to that third verse. We're going to skip the kids and go into it. He said, except ye become converted. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the number one key. Mm -hmm. The number two key, the one two, is be converted. That means change your whole set of thinking mind, soul, body, and strength. Let everything be changed. Mm -hmm. Alright? Be converted. Now, we know they couldn't receive the Holy Ghost at this time, mm -hmm. except on special occasions. But they could be converted. And so, they, so, so there has to be a gradually convert, convert, a conversion in a person in order to get them to receive the full conversion. Mm -hmm. You can't just, you get, most people can't just do it overnight. It has to be a growing process. Just like you grow as a, as, a, as a child to an adult. It has to be a growing process. The more you learn, the more you read, the more you study, the more you listen to Christ, the more you understand what God is saying, uh, and then, you can be then you can be totally converted. Once you become converted, then you have to have something to keep you converted. You, you just can't be converted and go out there and say, well, I'm converted. Mm -hmm. I done gave my life over to Jesus. Yeah. And uh, now, 
I'm, I'm, I'm totally ready. Mm -hmm. No, it don't work quite that way. You just made the first step. Yeah. Okay, you made the first step. Now the next thing you have to do, you have to learn what the next step is. Mm -hmm. And what Jesus is trying to do is teach them step by step mm -hmm. what it takes to become a leader in the kingdom of God and be in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> and, 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 and listen to what it says. It says, let you, be, let you become converted mm -hmm. and become not a little child, but as a little child. Mm -hmm. yes. As, you know that word as, he's not calling them little children, he said as a little child. Which means that other words take some example from the children. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what he said there. Take some examples from the children. Look at them. Mm -hmm. Look how they look how they they, they uh, associate, they fellowship, how they move mm -hmm. one around one another, how they treat one another, how they do one another. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? <laughs> little children? Are repeaters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they'll, they'll, they'll let everything soak in. Oh, yeah. Good and bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't care. They don't. And so what, what, and so what Jesus is saying, <clears throat> listen, listen and look at the children. God said one time, consider the ant. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Does he, does the, the, the ant work, work vigorously mm -hmm. all day long, yeah. going back and forth, yeah. bumping into each other, going around. Mm -hmm. But you never see them fighting. Yeah. They're always working, they're always bringing in goods for the women. Mm -hmm. They're building the nest. And Jesus is saying to the, to the disciples, to the disciples here, I'm trying to build a foundation for the kingdom to be, to be established and work on while we're down here on earth. Yeah. And he's trying to say to them, I need you mm -hmm. uh, to do it. He said, in other words, he said, I found, I believe the best that can be Convert it mm -hmm. and lead the kingdom with. Yeah. Y'all get y'all see that? Oh, yes. I picked the best that I believe mm -hmm. that the kingdom can be left in their hands. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when I leave here, there ain't gonna be no big U's, mm -hmm. big eyes, little U's. Yeah. <laughs> That's See, they, have, they don't understand that Jesus is spirit, speaking spiritual and they're thinking worldly. They're trying to, they think Jesus is bringing in a kingdom like what they're used to seeing. Yeah. And what Jesus is bringing is totally different. That's why you got to be humble and trustworthy to even get the concept of it because it's not what you're used to. Mm -hmm. Right, because see, that's why that's why down in the, in the further down it's about the offenses. Now, also, Jesus talked about things that's going to hold you up. Mm -hmm. The things that's going to hold you up, the one is your uh, 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 your flesh. Mm -hmm. He said, your flesh is your biggest enemy. Yeah. And what you and what you can, what, what you cannot do, and that is afford to get physical. You can't afford to let your eyes mm -hmm. deceive your spirit. You see, we got a, we got we, we got we got uh, three spirits that they well in us, mm -hmm. and that is two of them that well in us all the time. Mm -hmm. One is the your your spirit, yeah. and this next one is the evil spirit, which that you are born with, mm -hmm. which has to be converted and got out of you. 
then the Holy Spirit comes in. And once the Holy Spirit comes in, then your spirit and the Holy Spirit controls your body. And Jesus is saying here that you are not, you don't have the spirit in you yet, you have to be converted. Okay? And there's a lot of things gonna offend you. And you're gonna be offended, you're gonna be offended. But you can't get physical. You gotta remember that you are a spiritual kingdom. You are a you are a holy body. You are, you are God's uh, special person, and God is expecting you to, to want hold your tongue. Want don't let your eyes get away with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, don't let your hand go crazy. Mm -hmm. Don't let your feet go where, they, where they're not supposed to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when the bell rang, I'm supposed to stop.